Hello and welcome to The Public Good. This is Sam McGavern from the Partnership for the Public Good, or PPG, which unites over 275 community organizations working to build a better Buffalo. Delighted to be joining you every Tuesday at 1 p.m. on Facebook Live and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Power 96.5 FM and Mix 1080 AM. Today we're joined by Marisa Wigglesworth. She's the president of the Buffalo Science Museum. We'll be talking about some of the exciting new developments there and detailing the special neighbor path program for people who live in the three zip codes around the Science Museum. Don't forget to follow PPG on Facebook and Twitter, and of course you can always get great information on our website, ppgbuffalo.org. Uh, the Public Good is sponsored in part by Univera Healthcare, real people who really care. And you can get videos from The Public Good, including the special three minute recap videos on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. One quick announcement for you before we get started. Uh, next Tuesday, August 21st, we're going to have a free training on the Community Reinvestment Act. That is the act that uh, instructs banks in how to uh, do lending and other services for people in low and moderate income neighborhoods. It's a really important law and one that we're using to great effect here in Buffalo with the Buffalo Niagara Community Reinvestment Coalition. Uh, you can find out more about the Community Reinvestment Act and how to use it in your city. Uh, this uh, coming Tuesday, August 21st, it'll be here at PPG at 1 p.m. And you can find out more about that uh, on our website in the events section. So go to ppgbuffalo.org, click on events, and find out more about the free Community Reinvestment Act training. We've got a national expert, uh, Kevin Hill, coming into Buffalo to lead that. Should be a great program. All right, with that, I want to welcome to the show Marisa Wigglesworth, president of the Science Museum. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. Uh, a lot's been going on at the Science Museum recently. Very, some exciting new developments, um, including the new uh, reconstruction of the observatory. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, it's been a very, very exciting summer. Uh, we were delighted to reopen the newly restored Kellogg Observatory to the public on July 14th and 15th over a two-day celebration made possible by our presenting sponsor, M&T Bank. And the Kellogg Observatory has been closed to the public since 1999. Oh, wow. So this is now after almost 20 years of the yeah. facility laying dormant uh -huh. for us to have the opportunity to again make this marvelous venue for learning and discovery available to the community is uh, quite a wonderful thing and, and something right. we're very proud of. So since it's been closed for so long, probably most people listening haven't been there. So what happens Indeed. when you go to the Kellogg Observatory? Indeed. Uh, well, the, the highlight of the Kellogg Observatory truly is the opportunity to view the planets and the stars through uh, the fully refurbished original Lundin telescope that mm. was placed in the observatory when it was uh, originally built and opened in 1930. Oh, wow. So we have facilitated viewing sessions on Wednesday evenings with uh -huh. our Kellogg Observatory astronomer. Uh -huh. Those are 30-minute sessions. They are by reservation only uh, mm -hmm. due to the fact that capacity within the observatory is limited. Mm -hmm. Periodically, however, in addition to those facilitated viewing sessions on Wednesday evenings, we are uh, opening, up a, opening up the opportunity to view the stars mm -hmm. from the roof of the museum oh. on um, on evenings when something special is happening mm. in the night sky. So mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago when Mars was in opposition, we had a special Mars night as part of our Science After Hours program series mm -hmm. for adults. We had about 100 people on the roof all enjoying the opportunity to look up at the planets through some telescopes. Tomorrow evening, Wednesday, mm -hmm. uh, we do anticipate that um, weather permitting uh, will be particularly good viewing of the planets in our solar system. Absolutely. So we hope to also open up um, opportunities for a much wider audience than the small number that can enjoy the facilitated viewing to come nice. up to the roof and view those planets. Now these um, rooftop events and observatory events, are they for members only or open they, to the general public? They are indeed uh, not for members only, uh -huh. uh, though members do enjoy a discount mm -hmm. on the reservation price. So they are available to the general public. Mm -hmm. uh, there, are, they, there are five spaces available for each half hour viewing session okay. between 9 and 11 p.m. Uh -huh. uh, and those are $10 per person. Mm -hmm. um, they become available at 10 a.m. on Wednesday morning and that really is because it is so heavily weather um, Oh, you know, right. weather dependent, right. we aren't able to make a call yeah. with more advance notice than that. Right, yeah. right, fantastic. Yeah. Um, while we're talking about membership, I want to make sure that we talk about your neighbor pass program. Yeah. Um, 
great opportunity for folks in the three zip codes around the Science Museum, 14208, 14211, and 14212. Uh, people who live in those zip codes are eligible for a neighbor pass. Tell us what yes. they got with a neighbor yes. pass. Yes, indeed. Uh, people in those zip codes um, are able to buy a neighbor pass, which is a family membership or an individual membership, at a dramatically reduced price. So the family membership is, um, allows for up to two adults and any number of children under 18 from a single household mm -hmm. to come visit the museum as many times as you like free of charge and that pass costs just ten dollars for families in one of those three zip codes. Great. Uh, so really want to urge folks to take advantage of that uh, ten dollar uh, neighbor pass gets you into the museum all year um, and there's some other advantages to being a member as well, which we'll probably touch on throughout the program, but that is really a great thing for, for your neighbors. And I know that that's part of your, um, your strategic plan, your goals uh, moving forward is to interact with the neighborhood and engage with the neighborhood. Tell us a little yeah. more about kind of the, the philosophy there. Great, thank you. So we did a strategic planning process for the Buffalo Museum of Science last year. Mm -hmm. We identified a three-year strategic plan, so we are in the first year of those three years, and that strategic plan has four primary objectives. Each of the objectives together roll up to the goal of fundamentally raising the level of science literacy and engagement for all in our community. So we're making a very bold statement about mm -hmm. how the Buffalo Museum of Science can really bring a positive impact to Western New York. Mm -hmm. One of those four objectives uh, is specifically focusing on our East Side neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The Buffalo Museum of Science were very proudly located mm -hmm. in Martin Luther King Park and mm -hmm. Olmstead Park mm -hmm. on Buffalo's East Side, and we believe we we uh, can and should um, be an even stronger player in mm -hmm. ensuring that there are a variety of science learning opportunities for people of all ages right there in our neighborhood. Yeah, so the neighbor pass is one great example of that. Yeah. Um, you've got some really fun events coming up. I want to make sure we talk about uh, Bubble Fest yep. and some of the other things. Um, so for folks who haven't been to the museum in a while, this is a great great way to re-engage one of these special programs. So. Let's start with Bubble Fest. What's yeah. Bubble Fest? Bubble Fest is an incredibly fun event. Uh, it is one of the special days of programming that we have. We have a handful of them throughout the course of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, we build out throughout the museum uh, an array of activities, all really focused around one broad theme in mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. uh, so bubbles. Who doesn't like bubbles? And there's a ton of interesting science behind bubbles. Mm -hmm. um, so physics and chemistry and, um, and a great variety of things. Mm -hmm. So uh, for Bubble Fest, we have activities, like we have a, a bubble dance floor, we are blowing giant bubbles together, we have a kid wash outdoors where uh, young children can actually go through um, a mechanism mm -hmm. that's almost <laughs> like a car wash and get all <laughs> sudsed up. At the same time, we're communicating the ideas of viscosity and tension mm -hmm. and the fundamental um, aspects that help one understand and how a bubble mm -hmm. is created and what mm -hmm. happens when a bubble bursts. So there yeah. is some good science behind it uh -huh. as well. Uh, it's hard to talk about bubbles in Buffalo without thinking about the bubble man in Allentown. Uh, for those who haven't observed, there's a person who blows bubbles out of his window uh, very frequently uh, right at Elmwood and Allen. And uh, I, f I find that uh, it makes you a little happier every time you go through Elmwood and Allen when the bubble man is blowing the bubbles. So. Uh, we have a good bubble tradition going in uh, Buffalo, indeed, I think. Indeed. Uh, so Bubble Fest coming up uh, September 15th, uh, and the evening before, you were telling me there's the um, the grown-ups uh, program about bubbles, right? That's right, that's right. Uh, we have launched in recent months a suite of programs for adults. Um, we are well known as a place that does wonderful programming for children, and we recognize that we have just as much to offer uh, people of all ages in our community. So we are building out a suite of programs for adults. Uh, one of those programs is our Science After Hours events. So mm -hmm. for the first time, uh, in addition to offering Family Bubble Fest on the Friday evening before, September 14th, we will have, just as you say, Bubble Fest for adults. Mm -hmm. So some more adult-oriented bubble-themed activities and likely some champagne on the menu that night. Nice. Um, so I had a chance to walk through the museum recently and I hadn't been in some time and you've uh, rebuilt the whole museum. I mean, a every floor, every exhibit, it seemed like had been redone. And there's a really new approach, in a, it's, a, it's very dynamic, and I wonder if you could share with us uh, what your approach is and, and what, 
what folks can expect to find when they go through the museum yeah. today. Absolutely. Uh, the, the complete renovation and restoration of the Buffalo Museum of Science was really launched uh, almost as much as 10 years ago now. And it really was a commitment to bring the entire museum up to a contemporary learning engagement mm -hmm. standard. Mm -hmm. So we have indeed, just as you say, re rethought and rebuilt each of the spaces within the museum. And in doing so, the team was very thoughtful. Uh, particularly, we call each of our spaces science studios mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than exhibits. Mm -hmm. And the sense there really is that the exhibit is a passive experience. Mm -hmm. Something is on exhibit and the guest looks at it in right. a passive sense. Conversely, the idea of a studio, like a dance studio or an art studio, is where the thing happens. Mm -hmm. And we believe that science is happening in our spaces, in mm -hmm. our science studios. They are structured, they are designed to help each guest explore, ask questions, find answers, make mm -hmm. connections, and then generate the next set of questions. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. of course, we're always asking questions. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're visiting the Science Museum today, um, you're not just gonna go look at stuff. You're going to do Indeed. things. It's going to be Indeed. interactive. Indeed, each ex each each science studio, each mm -hmm. uh, gallery space is is fully interactive. Yes, yeah, which is yeah. it's really great to see, and and it's uh, it's also I noticed walking through just visually, it's very welcoming, yeah. very Terrific. fun, um, dynamic. So really urge people to go go look at uh, today's science museum. So one of my very favorite places in Buffalo is Tip Nature Preserve. Um, they're probably folks who don't realize that the Science Museum also operates a really large nature preserve. So if anyone out there hasn't been there, tell us a little bit about yeah. TIFT and what, yeah. what you can find there. And, and I'm delighted to hear that it's one of your favorite mm -hmm. places. It's one of my favorite places as well. Of course, TIFT Nature Preserve, many people know it as TIFT Farms. Mm -hmm. uh, TIFT Nature Preserve is a nature preserve, 264 acres. Uh, and we refer to it as the living collection of the Buffalo Museum of Science. Mm -hmm. We really think of TIFT as hand in hand, mm -hmm. really forwarding very much the same kinds of learning objectives. We're helping people of all ages uh, understand what it means to be good stewards of the environment, mm -hmm. understand you know, how, how nature works and, mm -hmm. and how nature impacts humans and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, so out at TIFT, we have the Herb and Jane Darling Environmental Education Center where we offer a great variety of programming, summer camps for young people during the day, mm -hmm. nature walks on some weekend afternoons, mm -hmm. we offer Birding 101, uh, there is a family fishing night this week where families can come out together, borrow mm -hmm. some equipment from TIFT and do some fishing off the pier. Mm -hmm. uh, we have adult programs uh, out at TIFT as well. There's one mm -hmm. on bugs this week. Mm -hmm. um, so TIFT is really a very special place with a lot to offer the community. And uh, to, to go to TIFT, is there a, a price for non-members or what's the... No, what's thank the you for asking. Yeah. So, so to walk the trails at TIFT mm -hmm. uh, is free to the public, mm -hmm. open uh, at dusk till dawn mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Of course, we always ask all members of the public to be very respectful of the fact that it is a nature preserve. Sure. Uh, we ask you to stay on the trails. We ask mm -hmm. you to pack out what you've brought in. Mm -hmm. uh, we unfortunately don't welcome dogs mm -hmm. as they are predators to many of the animals mm -hmm. that make sure. TIFT their home. Uh, but really, the nature preserve is there for everyone to enjoy and it is free of charge. Some of the programs we offer, mm -hmm. such as those camps and some of the workshops, mm -hmm. uh, do come with a modest charge. And, and there again, probably smart for people to take advantage of that neighbor pass. Does that help with TIFT as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So anytime we have a program fee at TIFT or the Buffalo Museum mm -hmm. of Science, members do enjoy a discount, including those neighbor pass members. Yeah. It's yeah. such a beautiful place and it's... Um, I mean, there's a really interesting history with uh, it was going to be a giant landfill and people organized and protected that land because they knew that there were uh, wonderful natural assets there, Absolutely. plants and animals. Um, and so the, as a result, I forget when it was, you probably know, but they did put some garbage there, but they buried yep. it under those big green hills that yep. we look at yep. um, and left the rest for, for us to yep. enjoy. Yep. Uh, now, when I was out there, I think one of your staff was saying that one of the mounds is the tallest or second tallest place in Buffalo? As I understand it, it is the second highest second spot highest in the city of Buffalo, Buffalo with, I believe, um, a spot on the uh, University at Buffalo campus beating us out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but one thing that uh, I noticed that that's great for is you get a great view of the lake. 
and I really would suggest to people looking for a good place to watch sunset yes. uh, that you go to Tift uh, Nature Preserve and you take the walk that takes you up to the top of the mound and you perch up there and you've got this beautiful view of the lake and um, can really watch a beautiful sunset there. Uh, but there's all kinds of beautiful birds and animals okay. and, and programs mm -hmm. out there for folks at Tift Nature Preserve. So really urge people to get a look at that. And it's exciting to see the rest of the Outer Harbor kind of catching up to you mm -hmm. in a way where now there are a lot of other opportunities out there. So you can go to TIFF, but then you could also stop by Times Beach Nature Preserve and, and walk on their boardwalks. You could go to Wilkeson Point. There's, you know, there's a lot happening out there now, which is great. There certainly is. And, and I've really been very impressed um, that those organizations, those that you mentioned and a number of others on the Outer Harbor, are really working together to be strategic about, yeah. about what each organization brings that is special, how do we highlight that, and mm -hmm. how do we really build out an array of experiences for guests coming to the Outer Harbor that capitalizes on, on what each organization can uniquely bring. Yeah, and you now you've got the brand new state park directly across Indeed, yes. from the boulevard from you yes. out there, which is a nice yeah. asset as well. Well, it's great to hear about all the good things going on at the Science Museum. Why don't we, why don't we take a step back now and just Talk about um, your approach to science in Buffalo and some of the things that you think the Science Museum brings. So you talked a little bit about your mission already, mm -hmm. um, but what's, what is some of the value that you see for, let, let, let's talk about someone who isn't going to be a scientist. Right, sure. Um, an ordinary person who's you know, got other kinds of interests. What do you think it adds to their lives to get exposed to what sure. you have at the Science Museum? Sure, sure. Um, and you know, I, I chuckle at, at the phrase an ordinary person because <laughs> of sort of, of course we're all scientists, right? All of us ordinary people, we're all scientists. Uh -huh. Because really science is about asking questions, mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. observation, understanding how one thing is like another, how one thing is different from another, and then mm -hmm. having a, a, allowing that to lead you to the next mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and really, I think that's at the root of the kinds of uh, the kinds of benefits and value mm -hmm. the visits to the Science Museum and our programming offer mm -hmm. to everyone yeah. who takes part. In addition to providing science content, and really perhaps probably even more important than to sharing out science content, mm -hmm. our first obligation is to help guests develop skills around asking questions mm -hmm. and making connections mm -hmm. and thinking critically and problem solving. Mm -hmm. So all mm -hmm. of our experiences age appropriate, mm -hmm. uh, but all of our experiences really do find a way to start to build skill in those areas. Mm -hmm. And what's truly gratifying and, and important for Western New York and, mm -hmm. and you know, our society at large today is that those skills, critical thinking, making connections, mm -hmm. asking questions, mm -hmm. uh, those are the skills that employers are looking mm -hmm. for, right? Mm -hmm. Regardless of the field you're going into necessarily. Right. Uh, you know, wh whether you're going to be a, a dance instructor or a chemist, right. th there is value in your ability to understand how like goes with like mm -hmm. and to construct the question mm -hmm. that's going to move you forward most effectively. Yeah, and you've got, um, you know, we talked a little bit about your location on the east side of Buffalo. You mentioned you're in Martin Luther King Park, beautiful Olmsted Design Park. Um, but you also have a school um, right attached to your building. So talk a little bit yeah. about the connection between the school and the museum yes. and how that works. Yes, so it is the uh, Dr. Charles R. Drew Science Magnet School. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Charles R. Drew, for listeners who may not be aware, was the individual who identified uh, the process that allows blood to be transfused. Oh. So he, is, he, he formed the science um, that allow b blood to move from one place to another without mm -hmm. it you know, going bad, in, mm -hmm. in layman's words. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. interestingly, today, it is a rather common model for a magnet school or a public school to be attached to a science museum, or mm -hmm. at least have a deep partnership mm -hmm. with. Buffalo was the first, right wow. here at the Buffalo Museum of Science, the mm -hmm. Dr. Charles R. Drew Magnet School was the first model of that. And really the premise there is mm -hmm. that the students are going to benefit even more fully 
by enjoying the opportunities of the informal learning environment that this mm -hmm. Buffalo Museum of Science provides mm -hmm. as a complement to mm -hmm. the learning that happens in their formal classroom mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so today, we are very fortunate to uh, operate under a contract with the, um, the Buffalo Public School District uh, to work directly with the students of the Charles Archer Magnet School as part mm -hmm. of their science curriculum. Mm -hmm. So each of those students each week enjoys time with the facilitators of learning who are staff members at the Buffalo Museum of Science. Mm -hmm. They're in the classrooms, they're in the science studios, they're in other parts of the museum, um, and they're really, you know, again, not only building those science content skills, but again, building mm -hmm. those skills that make a good scientist. Yeah. yeah. Now, you've worked in um, a number of different cities around the country, uh, moved to Buffalo several years ago. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about sort of science in Buffalo. So what yeah. are some of the particular opportunities and challenges that you found about the context of, of uh, Buffalo? Uh, well, I've, I'm delighted to be in Buffalo, and I just find Buffalo an incredibly exciting community, and, and perhaps better said, a community going through an incredibly exciting period right now. So I'm, I'm really just very, very pleased to be a part of it. Uh, I do find that Buffalo, you know, Buffalo is a city that, that really values its history. Mm -hmm. And of course, the history is, is manufacturing and shipping uh, and a, a lot of scientific innovations mm -hmm. that came in support of that or even that led those fields. So I very much come to Buffalo recognizing it as a, mm -hmm. a science city as, mm -hmm. or a STEM city, mm -hmm. I should say, because mm -hmm. the, the technology behind it, uh, the engineering that goes into Buffalo's history. Mm -hmm. So certainly right now there is a recognition you know, with, with energy around um, the medical campus and the, mm -hmm. the innovation center happening mm -hmm. there, energy around a number of the companies coming, for instance, through the 43 North competition. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel like Buffalo is in a period right now where uh, the community recognizes the great opportunity mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. STEM fields and STEM professions. Right. Yeah. Um, now, as a woman running a science museum, I'm sure yeah. you think a lot about the role of women and girls in science and efforts to encourage uh, more participation in science by women and girls. Talk to us a little bit yeah. about your thoughts on that and, yep. the, and the science <laughs> museum's thoughts on that. Yes, absolutely. It's something, and, and certainly I'll give credit to my colleagues uh, across the leadership of the Buffalo Museum of Science, regardless of gender, mm -hmm. uh, we recognize that you know if, if we're going to here in Buffalo, if we're going to meet the needs of the uh, STEM job market, we're going to need mm -hmm. all genders. We're mm -hmm. going to need all of Buffalo to be ready to step up. Mm -hmm. So we think about it a lot. Just one project that I'm really excited to talk about that we'll be launching this fall is called the Teen STEM Initiative, TSI. Mm -hmm. uh, it is going to be a program for teenagers. We anticipate likely young women, hopefully right from our neighborhood, where we'll be offering out of school time programming, mm -hmm. again, offering exposure to STEM fields and STEM education, and at the same time, helping these young people build the kinds of skills that will help them be what I call a successful 21st century citizen. Mm -hmm. uh, workplace readiness skills, um, you know, how, basic skills in how do you interview, how do you prepare your resume, um, really skills that will help these young people, you know, excel when they are ready to leave the Buffalo Museum of Science mm -hmm. and our East Side neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So tell us if someone out there is interested in participating in that program or has a family member who wants to, what's the... Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, I would say keep your eye on our website. Um, mm -hmm. This is brand new. It's, it's, we are absolutely committed to it from, um, Committed to it for this fall, but we have mm -hmm. not put our application, um, application mm -hmm. information out into the public just okay. yet, but we'll be sure to do so. Keep an eye on our website, sciencebuff.org. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we just have a few minutes left. Um, are there things that we haven't touched on that you want to make sure that uh, folks out there hear about, whether it's upcoming events or initiatives or anything else about the Science Museum? I would say, I just remind everybody that we mm -hmm. are open every day of the week mm -hmm. from 10 to 4 at the mm -hmm. Buffalo Museum of Science. Mm -hmm. On Wednesdays, the museum is open late until 9 p.m. And then, of course, on Wednesday nights from 9 to 11, those facilitated viewing experiences in the Kellogg Observatory. And uh, possibly one tomorrow night. Possibly one tomorrow uh, night. Fingers crossed for the weather. If the weather's good Wednesday evening, you said would be a particularly good time to see the Indeed. planets? A particularly good time to see the planets in our solar mm -hmm. system, yes. Didn't we just have a meteor shower? 
Uh, uh, yes, I believe day. it's the Perseids are, are what if they peaked just last week, and uh -huh. so they're still visible, I believe, for another week or handful of days. So you yes. might you might get some shooting stars. You might get as some well as some stars. plants yes. uh, if if the weather permits uh, tomorrow evening. So definitely urge people to uh, check out the renovated Kellogg Observatory. Go look at the stars and the planets, and maybe some shooting stars. Um, and remind people in the three zip codes around the Science Museum, 14208, 14211, and 14212, that you qualify for the Special Neighbor Pass program uh, in which you can get a family membership for only $10 instead of $70. Um, that gets you into the museum all year round, gets you into tip, uh, nature preserves programs, science museum programs um, at, at discounts or for free. So really a great program. Um, all right, with that, I want to thank uh, Marissa Wigglesworth from the Buffalo Science Museum for being on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Great to hear about everything that's going on. Uh, next week on The Public Good, we'll be talking with Michael Zack. He is with the Grow Operative, and they are creating a food hub in an east side building, raising plants and fish in an interconnected, sustainable ecosystem while training students for urban agriculture jobs. That's Mike Zach from Grow Operative uh, next Tuesday on The Public Good. We'll be here on Facebook Live at 1 p.m. and with you on WUFO Power 96.5 FM and Mix 1080 AM at 7 p.m. every week. Thank you.